Let's get started solving this challenge. Go ahead and create a new Xcode project, and we're going to choose iOS application, single view application. We can press next, and we're going to go ahead and entitle this UI table view controller challenge solution. And I'm going to make my class prefix CC, and my device is going to be iPhone. I can press next, and I'm going to press create Git repository because I'm going to be pushing this up to Git which is the first problem in this set. So we can press create and enlarge our project a little bit here. So next what I'll do is I'll go over to GitHub and you're gonna to wanna to log in and you should see new repository over on the right side here. So you can go ahead and press new repository and I'm gonna give this a repository name. So I'm gonna call this UI table view controller um, challenge solution and we don't really need a description here we can just press create a new repository we can make this public and we're gonna go ahead and we only if we remember need these three lines of code and in reality we only really need the last two because we can kind of remember this at this point we need to commit our changes and first commit maybe we'll add a different message so let's see how we do this. Well, let's first get our project added here, and then when we're done with all of our code, we'll push up the changes so we can practice that. So we're gonna open up Terminal, and I'm saving my projects to my desktop. So if you're saving your project to a different directory, you're gonna to wanna to locate that directory and CD into it using the change directory syntax. So let's remember how we do this. So let's first type ls and see that we're on the home directory, and on the home directory, I have access to my desktop, my documents. Maybe you saved your project there. Um, maybe you created your own file on the home directory. Mine's saved on my desktop, so I'm going to CD into my desktop. And I'm going to type ls again. And we see that my UI table view controller challenge solution project is now here. So let's CD into that directory. Notice that when my project name has spaces, I have to add these backslashes. And at the end, I have to add a forward slash. So I use the tab key in order to autofill this. But if you have naming, if you have projects that are named similarly, it's going to cause some problems. So maybe a single um, word for your project name when you're first starting out can be helpful. As you get more advanced, you should be able to handle having a project name with spaces. All right, so great. Let's type ls again, take a look at all these uh, files in here. So we have another directory where we're saving all of our files for our project. We also have a .xcode project file, and we have a test directory as well. So this is everything we need. So let's type git add space period, which will add all of our files, and then we'll commit all these files. We can say git commit, and we'll pass it the message, um, you know, started or created project. And we can hit enter. And now we need to set up a remote which is where we're gonna push our code to, like where online should we push our code? So let's add a remote, and what I did was I just copied this line in and pasted it using command V, and finally we need to push our changes up. So again, we can copy this last line here, git push dash u origin master, and this dash u is just gonna save some of these credentials for us, or not credentials, it's gonna save some of the settings for us. And we can type our credentials in using the username. And notice that when I typed my password in, it was hidden, right? I couldn't see it, but it was still going in there properly. So if you get some error, just make, you know, you might need to re-enter your credentials. So great, now I've been able to push my project up. Let's confirm that my code has been added. So let's refresh my GitHub repository. And we see now that all my code is up here, right? So my full project has been added properly. Great, let's start solving this uh, challenge some of the other problems in this challenge well let's go to our main storyboard and the first thing we're going to want to delete is our view controller so we can make sure our view controller is selected in our scene outline we can just press the delete key and we're going to select cc view controller dot h and dot m and press the delete key and we're not going to select remove references we're going to select move to trash this is important uh, it would just eat up space, basically. If we just remove references, it, kind of, it saves the file, we can access it still. We know we don't need these files anymore, so let's get rid of them, let's move it to the trash. Um, so let's go back to our storyboard file, and we're gonna add a table view controller in instead. 
So great, we have our table view controller. We see we even get a prototype cell here and we can update some attributes on that prototype cell uh, in order to make it look different later. But the first thing we wanna do always, whenever we add a new view controller or table view controller or collection view controller, we add a new view controller or view controller subclass to our storyboard, we immediately wanna make a file or a view controller to manage this. So we can go to File, New File, and we're gonna choose iOS Cocoa Touch Objective-C class, and we're gonna make this a subclass of UI Table View Controller. And we can call this CC Table View Controller. Table View Controller. And we can press Next, and press Create. So great, now I have a table view controller to manage the table view controller I added to my storyboard. But yet, wait, they're not properly hooked up yet. We need to go back to our storyboard, make sure that I have my table view controller selected and go to the identity inspector and update the class. So there's a class managing this new table view controller we added. So let's type in CC table view controller. And now, my table view controller class that I added is managing this thing I added to my storyboard or this table view controller I added to my storyboard. So let's go to CC table view controller.m and start implementing both of our data source methods, uh, or actually all three of them. Specifically, we need the number of sections in table view, the number of rows in section, and the cell for row index path. So we want to have a different number of sections. We want three sections, so let's return three instead of zero. And we're gonna to have to use some if statements here for the number of rows in section because we want different row numbers, different amount of rows, depending on what section we're in. So let's type if section is equal to zero, and we can add curly braces, we're gonna return two. Else if our section is equal to one, return one, and then otherwise, let's just return three. And we can remove our final return here. And why can I remove this final return, or why should I? Well, there's no way for that line of code to evaluate, because we have an if and an else here. Regardless of what section number we pass in, one of these will trigger to true. And when we return, the method stops, right? So it doesn't go any further. And leaving code in that's never going to evaluate is not good coding technique. So the next thing we want to do is we want to update cell for row and index path, or we want to adjust the way our cell looks dynamically based on where we are in our table view, based on the section and the row number. So we're going to say if our first section or section zero, so index path dot section is equal to zero. Well, what should we do? We're going to say cell.textlabel.text to uh, I am in section 0. Next, if we're in section 1, so we can say else if index path dot section is equal to 1. And let's add curly braces. We'll say cell.textlabel.text is equal to, and we'll say another section. Finally, if we're in any other section but 0 or 1, let's simply display the index path's row number and we'll use an NS format string. So let's simply say cell.textlabel.text is equal to NS string, string with format, at quote, and we're going to say cell, and we're going to say percent %i, and we'll pass in the index path dot row to highlight the fact that in each section the rows start at zero and we go to one, two, three until we get to a new section then it restarts to zero. So we're gonna be able to see the index path row print out to our cell. Here we've been using index path dot section to figure out what section we're in, but we can also access the row property on index path in order to figure out what row in that section we're looking at. The final thing we want to do is we want to update our storyboard's prototype cell to match our cell identifier. So let's go back to our main storyboard file and let's go to the prototype cell and let's go to the attributes inspector and we're going to see this identifier. We're going to make sure we have table view cells selected in our scene outline 
and let's simply type cell in to our reuse identifier. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch my simulator to iPhone Retina 4 inch and I can run my application again and we'll see that I am another section 0 prints out for our first section another print section prints out for our second section and because our third section or section 2 had three rows we see cell 0 for row 0 prints out cell 1 for row 1 prints out and cell 2 uh, prints out for row 2 great so now that I have my project working properly let's update our github repo with these changes so I'm going to go back to terminal here and make sure I still have my I'm still in the correct directory so if you close that you're going to have to cd and navigate back into this directory and let's go ahead and let's commit our additional changes so git commit uh, let's add our changes first excuse me so git add space period and now we're going to get these all ready to be committed to our repository so let's do git add space period and we can press enter and we're going to add a commit we're going to actually add our changes so we're going to add the dash m here which is to allow us going to add to add a message for our commit it's going to tell us what we're doing in this commit so solve the challenge and let's go ahead and we made this commit so we see that we made we changed five files we added 171 changes to our project and we deleted 48 other changes and we also added two new uh, view controller files that we're now following so great let's finally push those changes up to github so we can do git push origin master because we're on our master branch and we can hit enter we need to enter our github credentials and let's go confirm that we've made these changes so let's refresh our github repo and we can navigate into the second one here and we see now that we have cc table view controller.m so we can click on that and if we scroll down here we can take a look at some of the code and we see the code we just wrote so we know that our changes have been properly added to this github repository